can be filled here at this table. Food for all who hunger and drink for all who thirst. Drink of his love, wine of salvation. You shall live forever in Jesus Christ the Lord. You who labor for justice, you who labor for peace, you who steady the plow in the field of the Lord. Come and be filled here at this table food for all who hunger and drink for all who thirst drink of his love wine of salvation you shall live forever in Jesus Christ the Lord Hello everyone and welcome to Holy Ghost Church in the Light of Christ Catholic Collaborative of Abington and Whitman. Today we are celebrating the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our pastor, Father Adrian, is away for some well-deserved rest and I'm Father Bob Cullen, the parochial vicar here in the Collaborative. Joining me today are our organist, Lynn Bartlett, our cantor, Dennis Leonard, and our uh, Lector Elaine Malisi. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord of Mercy. Lord of Mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, God in the highest, and on earth peace, peace to people of good goodwill. Will. We praise you, you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. And let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever, amen. amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. I prayed and prudence was given me. I pleaded and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepter and throne and deemed riches nothing in comparison with her, nor did I liken any priceless gem to her, because all gold in view of her is a little sand and before her silver is to be accounted mire. 
beyond health and comeliness, I loved her, and I chose to have her rather than the light, because the splendor of her never yields to sleep. Yet all good things together came to me in her company, and countless riches in her hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Let your work be seen by your servants and your glory by their children. And may the gracious care of the Lord our God be ours. Prosper the work of our hands for us Prosper the work of our hands. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. second reading is from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, indeed the word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must render an account the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt down before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. 
You know the commandments, you shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honor your father and mother. He replied and said to him, Teacher, all of these I have observed from my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You are lacking in one thing. Go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At that statement, his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. And so Jesus again said to them in reply, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said among themselves, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For human beings it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for God. Peter began to say to him, We have given up everything and followed you. Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, there is no one who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the sake of the gospel who will not receive a hundred times more now in this present age houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and eternal life in the age to come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. That's a real difficult thing to hear for those of us who live in one of the richest nations in the world, not just in terms of comforts, but in the freedoms that we enjoy in our democracy. But do we really think that Jesus is talking about money? We are very familiar with the saying, money is the root of all evil. And if money causes evil, and clearly for some people it does, then surely for us getting into heaven will be like a camel passing through the eye of a needle. Jesus even says to the man in our gospel today who is looking for guidance, go and sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. The line that follows is very telling and is the inspiration for my homily this week. We are told, quote, at that statement, his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions, unquote. This man, who had so many possessions, still wasn't satisfied or happy with his life. With all that he had, he still felt empty. I guess there is a part of all of us that knows that all that we have won't amount to a hill of beans one day when we're called home to stand before the judgment seat of our Creator. True happiness cannot be found in money or possessions. And so if we get caught up in all of the accumulations we seek, if that's what we really value, that is also really sad. True happiness can only be found when we discover who we are and who we are called to be by God. We are children of God and we're called to be images of Christ. Remember what Jesus said, go sell everything you own and give to the poor and then come follow me. The man in our gospel is seeking everlasting life, happiness here on earth and then in heaven. And the most important instruction he gets from Jesus is follow me. The man in our gospel is seeking everlasting life. We are constantly bombarded with communications and advertisements and enticements. We have commitments we need to work to, to provide for our needs and the needs of our families. We all experience joys and sorrows. Trying to live morally, we are increasingly being told that's archaic thinking, promoting that if it feels good, do it no matter what mentality. 
follow me, Jesus says. Amidst all of this, we somehow have to figure out a way to follow Jesus. Our focus has to be remain, remain on keeping the commandments, growing in the virtues, and being the people who do what Jesus would do. Then, who can be saved, the disciples asked Jesus. And here comes the consolation. For human beings, it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for God. Jesus provides the means for our salvation. Jesus is the camel who went through the eye of the needle when he suffered crucifixion and death on the cross. He accomplished that by humbling himself and making the will of his Father his mission. Yes, obedience to the will of God and rightly prioritizing and detaching ourselves from the things that distract us from our relationship with God are the ways that we can concretely follow our Lord Jesus. Loving God above all things and loving everyone as we do ourselves, that's Jesus. Putting God first in our lives takes work and can be challenging, but we shouldn't walk away sad thinking it's impossible. I was just like this man in this story, hitting sort of a crossroad in my own life. I had a pretty good paying job, my own house, money to travel, but I sure knew I wasn't happy. I left my nicely furnished house at 7 a.m. and returned about 10 p.m. daily just to keep up with it all. I did go to church on Sunday, but I certainly didn't have time to pay attention to the real journey I was on and my imitation of Christ during the week. The turning point came when I received a huge raise at my job with more responsibility, which was going to take even more of my time. I had to make a change. And then I remembered what a career counselor once told me. You should choose a career that you love, that you would do even if you didn't get paid. I knew from the depths of my soul that the priesthood was calling, as it had been since my first communion and confirmation. Would I have the courage to leave that all behind? Yes, with God, all things are possible. I sold my house, my possessions, and applied to the seminary and started on the journey that would replace the tedium of my life with true happiness. And by the way, I didn't give away all my money. It wasn't an overnight thing. It took work and prayer. Just like we learned in the first reading, I prayed and prudence was given to me. I pleaded and the spirit of wisdom came to me. And then there's the second reading. The word of God is able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. That was one person's story. You all have your own. For me, to focus on my imitation of Christ, to follow Jesus, I was led to the priesthood. Your call is just as important because Scripture tells us that God calls the members of the body of Christ to different roles. And if we are witnesses to Christ's love and his salvation for us, we have to share this good news with others. And we gather here each week to give thanks to God for his love and to be strengthened in our resolve to really be really mindful of the things that are truly important in our lives and detached from the temporary comforts of this life. None of this message should leave us sad because scripture reminds us today, with God, all things are possible. May God bless you all. With confidence in God's presence among us, we offer our prayers and petition for the needs of our world, the needs of our church, and for our own individual needs. And help all believers to know the saving power of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, pray hear our, our prayer. prayer that richer nations find new ways to help those in poverty and to respond quickly to the victims of natural disasters. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. 
that possessions never become an obstacle to faith and that those who have taken the vow of poverty enjoy freedom in their choice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For Native peoples throughout the Americas that past injustices give way to justice, peace, and abundant blessings, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us remember in prayer the souls of the recently departed, including Nancy Latonin, Ronald Mullen, Karen Salomon, Sandra Dion, and all those who have been affected by the coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That this assembly be aware of those in our midst who suffer want, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And let us play, pray for Michael Glynn, Neil Glynn, Elaine Marzilli, Anne McCabe, and Robert Donovan, for whom this Mass is offered today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. And for all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, we, we pray to the Lord. To the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Most loving and merciful Father, we ask that you hear and answer these prayers according to your most holy will, for we make them through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Long before the mountains came to be And the land and sea and stars of the night Through the endless seasons of all time You have always been You will always be in every age, O oh Lord, you have been our refuge. In every age, O oh God, you have been our hope. Destiny is cast and at your silent word we return to dust and scatter to the wind a thousand years alike a single moment gone as the light that fades at the end of day in every age, O oh God, you have been our refuge. In every age, O oh God, you have been our hope. You have been our hope. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed men in your own image and set humanity over the whole world and all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant your peace to God, unite and governor throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Sean our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with his eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. 
Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of God's peace. peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Remember how you loved us to 
your death. And still we celebrate, for you are with us here. And we believe that we will see you when you come in your glory, Lord. We Celebrate, we believe. Here a million wounded souls are yearning just to touch you and be healed. Gather all your people and hold them to your heart. We remember how you loved us to your death, and still we celebrate, for you are with us here. And we believe that we will see you when you come in your glory, Lord. We remember, we celebrate, we Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. On behalf of Lynn, Dennis, Elaine, our cameraman Kevin, and myself, we want to thank you for welcoming us into your home this week for the celebration of the Eucharist. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Sent forth by God's blessing, a true faith confessing, the people of God from his dwelling take leave. God's sacrifice ended, or oh, now be extended, the fruits of this Mass in all hearts who believe. The seed of Christ's teaching, our inner souls reaching, shall blossom in action for God and for all. His grace shall incite us, His love shall unite us to further God's kingdom and answer His call.